Hello, we will read the magnetometer of the IMU sensor and visualize data using a Python script. As a result, you can easily work with IMU sensors to estimate an object's orientation. Before starting to program, I would like to show this block diagram from the datasheet. As you see, we have the accelerometer and the gyroscope, so so ADC will sample them and it will store the data within uh, sensor registers. However, when it comes to uh, magnetometer, uh, this is not the case. We don't have this direct access between sensor registers and the magnetometer. Instead, we have this master I2C that can communicate with the magnetometer. So what we need to do is to uh, configure master I2C so it will uh, sample uh, magnetometer data and it will store the data within uh, sensor registers. Uh, let me explain this uh, using this simpler block diagram. So using SPI or protocol, we can access to the accelerometer, gyroscope and the other registers, other data of the of the IMU sensor, but uh, magnetometer is not fully integrated to, to the sensor. Instead, we have this I2C master that establishes a communication between the magnetometer and the IMU sensor. So what we have to do is to configure, enable this I2C master. Once we configured I2C master, the data will be stored within these registers. So we have accelerometer, gyroscope, temperature, then we will end up with the magnetometer data. So in the end, we just need to read these registers to get magnetometer data. So inside of um, the initialization function, I call this uh, function. And inside of this function, what I do first uh, is resetting and enabling I2C master. Uh, for that, I use this user control register. And if you want to get more information about this register, you can refer to page uh, 36 uh, of the uh, data sheet. Then I set um, 400 kilohertz uh, I2C frequency by setting seven to this I2C master control register. For that, you can refer to page uh, 68. And then we have to define the, the data rate, output data rate, at which rate the, the I2C master will sample, uh, sample the magnetometer. And for that, let's uh, look at this register, which is on page 37. And here we have three options. We can use either a gyroscope data rate, accelerometer data rate, or we can set our own custom data rate. So I decided to set our uh, to set my own custom data rate. For that, I have to set this bit uh, of the register. Then we have to set the data rate using uh, this uh, register, which is on page sixty-eight. So output data rate will be equal to uh, 1.1 kilohertz divided by two to the power of the value of this register. So I set three. So the output data rate will be around 136 hertz. So we finished uh, configuring I2C master. Next, we have to communicate with the magnetometer. Um, if you scroll down and uh, open page uh, 77, you will find the description of the magnetometer. And inside of the magnetometer, we have these registers. And using I2C master, we have to uh, read or uh, either read or write to these registers. And, and before doing that, I want to show uh, the block diagram again. And as you see, um, the I2C master allows us to communicate with the magnetometer. But in addition, we can connect external sensors. 
to 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 these uh, wires to these pins of of the of the sensor of the IMU sensor. So using I2C master, we can communicate up to five uh, I2C devices, I2C sensors. Um, and and for that, let me share these um, uh, registers. So here we have uh, registers to communicate with um, sensor zero. And then we have a sensor one, sensor two, uh, sensor three, and finally sensor four. But um, but in our case, we don't care about external sensors. We only need to communicate with the magnetometer. So we gonna use only these um, only these registers to communicate with the magnetometer. And here how it works. So first I'm going to show uh, how to read a specific register of the magnetometer. So here we have this function. So um, using uh, this uh, register, we define the, the address uh, of the uh, I2C device. So in our case, uh, the address of the magnetometer is 0x0c. Then we have to specify the register that we want to write, where we want to write. So this is just one of the arguments of this function. So I set this value to this register. And, and then we have to define the data that we want to write. And for that, we're going to use this function, this register. So here we have this register. Once we defined all these parameters, all this data, we just need to set uh, this bit, uh, this bit uh, of, of this register so the transaction will happen. So what happens is that once we set this bit, this data will be written to this register of this device. So this is how it works. And the reading data works in a similar fashion, uh, but there's some minor differences. So when indicating the address, we have to set the most significant bit indicating read operation. That's why we have this uh, when uh, in this line. Then we define the register and also when enabling uh, the data transaction by setting this bit uh, of the control register, we also have to specify the, the number of bytes to be read. And um, that's what, I, what I'm doing here. So we have this second argument to define uh, the number of registers to be, to be read. So here we have this parameter. And, and the next logical question is where this data will be uh, stored. So again, as I showed you, the data will be stored within these registers. So imagine that uh, we, we start reading from register five, and if we decide to uh, read three registers, we will end up with register five, six and seven. So we have three registers starting from five. And, and these uh, registers, these three registers of the IMU sensor will hold uh, this data. And using this write operation, write register function, first what we need to do, we need to configure the magnetometer. First, we need to reset the magnetometer by setting uh, this low, lowest significant bit uh, of this control three register. And uh, that's what I do here after enabling uh, I squared master. So I set just 0 0.01 and, and I wait some time. Then 
then using uh, this uh, register control two register i set mode for uh, to the magnetometer so the magnet the magnetic flux will be sampled at 100 hertz uh, and this is a bit less than uh, output data rate that we define it so here i set a uh, mode four so we have everything settled so after calling this uh, magnetometer initialization function, what I do, I start reading data. So I just call this read register function and for, for the register, I specify um, this value 11. So we get uh, magnetometer data. However, for the number of bytes to be read, the number of uh, registers to be read. I set value uh, eight because we also have to read uh, read this register status register. Otherwise, the 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 magnetometer will not sample a new data. It will just keep the, the old data. So once we uh, read once, the the I squared C master will. Um, sample data automatically at, at the rate that we specified at 136 hours. So we don't do any, uh, we don't, we, we don't need to do new read operations. It will happen automatically. And then we have to slightly change uh, read data function. And the first uh, for uh, struct, before we had just accelerometer and the gyroscope, but in order to include the magnetometer data, I added three members uh, to this uh, struct. Then what, when I uh, read, I read tw 22 bytes. Then I just uh, take the data and then I will convert to the 16-bit uh, integer numbers. Then I print the value. Finally, we came to the most interesting part of the uh, tutorial, which is testing the code. And before testing, I just want to mention a small mistake that I made, which is uh, when, when sending day to data to the register of the magnetometer, it is important to set the least significant bit of slave control register. So you, we just need to add this uh, expression. Once we corrected uh, this uh, mix mistake, I resume the code, I open data console. And as you see, we have accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer readings. So everything is working perfectly. However, it is hard to appreciate the magnetometer data. We have just numbers. And to show the importance of having magnetometer data, I sent data to the computer through UART communication. So I read data and I sent through UART. And um, from the computer side, I have a Python script that plots every pair of the magnetometer data. So if I rotate along this axis, you can see that on this uh, first subplot, we're getting kind of a circle. So here I'm plotting the last 20 samples that we received. And if I rotate along this axis, we're getting a circle uh, on this second subplot. And, and finally, if I rotate the, along this axis, we get, we're getting a kind of circle on, on this third subplot. And unfortunately, I cannot do full rotation because of the wires. But if you, uh, if we really do rotation, we get, we will get corresponding circle on the plot. So what it means is that using the magnetometer data, you can estimate um, the orientation of, of the object to some degree using some uh, algorithms, including the Kalman filter. We can fuse the magnetometer data with a gyroscope and accelerometer readings to accurately estimate the, the orientation uh, of the object. Regarding the Python script, I have a function to receive uh, UART data. 
so I receive 18 bytes then uh, I extract nine uh, integer uh, nine um, short integer numbers then I uh, compute the mean then I use a list to store data and here I just print mean value and all and within the main function I create a plot with three subplots and I have um, I have a function to um, I periodically update the figure so here I just use the magnetometer data to update the, the plot so I plot last uh, 20 uh, received data 20 sample 20 samples and also I have a separate thread where I just uh, receive uh, data so this is how it works thanks for watching if you really like the video please subscribe to my channel it will help me to grow and reach new audience also as usual you can uh, find the source code and materials of other tons of projects on my patreon page by donating a very small amount of money this donation eventually will help me to provide you with more interesting more useful content so see you later